Welcome to News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss. Here now the news for May 27th, 2020. After months of unprecedented closure, Walt Disney World has presented its plan for a phased reopening before the Orange County Economic Recovery Task Force Group, the last major Central Florida theme park to do so after finalized announcements from Universal and SeaWorld. Let me start off with our opening dates. Our plans call for a phased reopening of our theme parks, beginning with the Magic Kingdom and Disney's Animal Kingdom on Saturday, July 11th. Epcot and Disney's Hollywood Studios will open on Wednesday, July 15th. Walt Disney World plans to begin its phased reopening on the following dates, the Magic Kingdom and Disney's Animal Kingdom on Saturday, July 11th, Epcot and Disney's Hollywood Studios on Wednesday, July 15th. Disney plans to deploy a series of soft reopening tactics for select audiences several days prior to the July 11th reopening with cast previews and affinity soft opening preview days. Uh, Disney will manage attendance through a new theme park reservation system that will require all guests to obtain a reservation for park entry in advance. Walt Disney World will reopen much like Shanghai Disneyland on the basis of a reservation system. Guests will have to secure a reservation in advance via this system to, I don't know if I've made that clear yet, but they would need that um, in order to gain access to the park. New ticket sales and Disney Resort Hotel reservations are being paused at this moment. Existing ticket holders and annual pass holders will be able to make reservation requests in phases before new tickets are sold. Disney will resume new ticket sales and hotel reservations after that period of time. Theme park reservations will be limited due to attendance limitations and will be subject to availability. The parks will reopen at limited capacity with gradual increases uh, as the county progresses through reopening phases. Social distancing and face masks will be required and enforced throughout the parks, and temperature checks will be required for access to the parks. Hand washing stations as well as hand sanitizer will be readily available throughout the parks. Disney is also developing relaxation zones for guests to break off from the main areas and take off their masks in designated spots. Increased mobile food ordering options will be available and cashless transactions will be encouraged. Character meet and greets and play areas will remain closed and parades, fireworks and other events that create crowds will also be temporarily suspended. Plans were presented during today's task force meeting headed by Jim McPhee, Senior Vice President of Operations for Walt Disney World Resort. Phase reopening proposal has since passed with zero opposition from the task force. Do note that the resorts and water parks themselves were not mentioned during the reopening proposal. Reopening plans will require the endorsement from the Orange County Mayor before they can be submitted to Florida Governor Ron DeSantis for final approval, but needless to say, it, it is all but approved at this point. Pending that government approval, the phase reopening plans uh, calls for Walt Disney World theme parks and resort hotels to open beginning July 11th with the Magic Kingdom and Animal Kingdom, followed by Epcot and Hollywood Studios on the 15th. Disney Vacation Club Resorts and Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground at Walt Disney World will reopen to members and guests on June 22nd. Disney Vacation Club Resorts in Vero Beach, Florida and Hilton Head, South Carolina will reopen to members and guests starting on June 15th. Plans to support required physical distancing as well as enhanced cleaning measures, along with a number of other safety and cleanliness protocols, will be implemented as part of this phased, uh, planned phased reopening. During this morning's reopening announcement, no other resort openings were mentioned as part of the proposal. Bob Chapek appeared on CNBC's Squawk Valley today to discuss the recent news that Walt Disney World will begin opening. During the interview, Chapek stated that Disney would be quote-unquote glad to host both the MLS and NBA to help resume their respective seasons. According to the article, quote, the team would then take part in a group stage compromised of five matches followed by a knockout stage. The group stage games would count in the regular season standings. Teams would spend a little over a month in Orlando, with June 21st being the projected date for teams to travel to Central Florida. There are no projected dates for the NBA's plan at Disney, but the NBA itself recently confirmed that they were in talks uh, with Walt Disney World. Orange County Mayor Jerry Demings informed the press that health teams inspected Walt Disney World Resort theme parks yesterday with satisfactory results. An Orange County inspection team visited both Walt Disney World and SeaWorld to see if they were following recommended guidelines with the CDC and the governor's executive orders. There will be quote-unquote secret shoppers among Universal Orlando Resort and most likely within Walt Disney World and SeaWorld properties to ensure that guests are following proper health and safety measures. Dr. Raul Pino, uh, the health officer for the Florida Department of Public Health in Orange County, expressed that their team was very happy with what they saw at the theme parks. 
Pino shared that after every guest experience an attraction, cast and team members should consider that the person who was previously riding the attraction could have contaminated the ride. Employees are also recommended to wear masks, frequently wash hands, and try to keep foot traffic one way. Of course, this will be difficult in theme parks because it just already is. It always has been. But they'll, they'll try their best. The challenge today at Springs for sure. Speaking of Disney Springs, today was the first day that select Disney-owned stores were reopening at the Springs, including two of the shopping district's main flagship stores, the World of Disney and the Marketplace Co-op. In anticipation of the large crowds visiting the stores, a new virtual queuing system was implemented to help manage crowds and maintain those all-important social distancing protocols. Cast members in blue checkered shirts were scattered across store entrances, ready to greet guests. That's the World of Disney costume, by the way. At the dedicated entrance to World of Disney, cast members with iPads took down details for each party in order to place them in a virtual queue system. Guests were asked to give their first and last initials, telephone number, and a count of how many people will be shopping with them. Upon being successfully registered in the virtual queue, guests receive a text message confirming that they're in line and they'll receive another text when it's time for them to enter the store. Queues could be seen stretching out along the entrances to both stores as guests clamored to buy the latest Disney Parks merchandise. The queue at one point went all the way around the marketplace and went all the way uh, to the back by rainforest and then looped over the bridge. It was insane. People stood there in the rain. Same setup and procedure was available at the Marketplace Co-op lines continued winding further down as crowds poured into Disney Springs in record fashion today. I will say it was way busier today than it was last week. The Shopping, Dining, and Entertainment District officially opened at 10 a.m., but guests were allowed into the Orange Garage for parking as early as 8. Capacity for World of Disney is about 200 guests, and that's how many guests will be called in staggered, mind you, at the official opening time. After that, guests will be let in on a one-in, one-out basis once they hit those 200 numbers. As expected, people flock straight to the World of Disney as their first go-to shopping spot for the day, and even with the virtual queue, a fair bit of waiting in line is still required to sign up. Within an hour uh, to go before the store's 10 a.m. opening, guests were waiting all the way, as I said, through the marketplace, down over the bridge, and beyond. Security guards working very hard alongside cast members to keep guests separated and follow the new procedures as they wait to enter the store. All across the store, signs prompt physical distancing, boldly reminding guests of the new regulations. This sign clearly reminds guests of all the precautionary measures all people, including cast members and guests, are expected to comply with. Face masks, social distancing, hand washing, mouth coverings are all stated, along with the all-important stay away if you have symptoms rule. On the ground, markers are in place advising guests where and where not to stand. It wasn't really surprising to see that a lot, a lot of shelves were quickly cleared right out. Uh, one of the most highly desired merchandise collections people were hoping to get their hands on was the Minnie Mouse The Main Attraction series, uh, having instantly been sold out online at Shop Disney. Um, they did put out some of the March collection, the Mad Tea Party, but with a limit of 10 per guest, they were gone after just a few people. That was really a tremendous, tremendous oversight. I got one mug. That's what was left. We were only like the 25th group called in, but I found a mug, and I only got this because someone put it somewhere it wasn't supposed to be. That's how I got it, but I didn't get anything else. Um, there were arguments. People were loud. I mean, you say people were upset that it was 10 per guest, and then I saw a lady arguing with the manager, and he said, no, it's three per guest, but then she pointed at the register, and there was clearly a single person with more than 10, and it was a mess. But uh, check out the website for lots more photos and video and such of the World of Disney reopening. Also, there was an entire new summer collection uh, that was released today, so there was some new merchandise other than this Minnie Mouse stuff that seemingly you can't get anywhere. The Daily Poutine just outside of World of Disney reopened today as well, and in fact was feeding guests as they waited for the store to open. The Daily Poutine is serving up delicious poutine, served on their regular menu, but guests will have to line up following uh, those social distancing markers on the ground in order to get some. This is great, just if only you don't want a coffee, if you want a soft drink or water or something. Um, while you're waiting for World of Disney or Cop to open, is a good option. Earlier today on the official Morimoto Asia Florida Instagram page, a restaurant announced that for a limited time, they're offering a discount to Walt Disney World cast members. The offer includes a 20% discount, including uh, excluding any alcoholic beverages, as long as you show your Walt Disney World cast ID. The offer is available through June 30th, 2020. Spaceship Earth at Epcot, if, according to the Walt Disney World website, is now marked as closed for refurbishment, uh, on there, as well as the My Disney Experience app. The, re the reimagining of Spaceship Earth was set to begin on May 26th, and despite 
The $900 million decrease in CapEx spending on the parks due to postponed or canceled projects. It seems, at least according to the website, that the refurbishment is on some sort of schedule. At the very least, that Spaceship Earth may not return July 15th when the park reopens. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens with this. Maybe Spaceship Earth comes back for a little bit. Maybe they're not actually starting. But if we're going by an official source, which is the Walt Disney World website, as of right now, we'd have to tell you that you have seen the last of that version of Spaceship Earth. But surely, given these circumstances, anything can happen. According to the Orlando Sentinel, the new state-of-the-art M&M's retail store coming to Disney Springs West Side remains on schedule. With the opening of this new store, the existing M&M's location in the Florida Mall will be closed forever. The Florida Mall shop reopened on May 15th following the new protocols that were first implemented uh, at other M&M's retail stores. Plans for the Disney Springs locations include over, over 100 tubes with M&M's for custom blends, personalized candy, and even dance parties with M&M's characters. Outside the up-and-coming M&M store at Disney Springs, a QR code is available for guests to scan and receive exclusive offers. After beginning the transition into a full Stage 2 reopening, it has been announced that California theme parks, including the Disneyland Resort, Universal Studios Hollywood, Knott's Berry Farm, and more, can reopen under Stage 3 of California's reopening plan. According to Brady McDonald of the OC Register, state officials have confirmed that theme parks like Disneyland fall under Stage 3, and can reopen at the start of that stage so long as the rate of the spread uh, and, the, and hospitalizations remain stable. California Governor Gavin Newsom has stated that the state could move into stage three as early as June. However, a specific date has not been stated for the start of that stage, as it will depend on medical data, seeing as though a theme park is seen as a higher risk business. Other stage three businesses include salons, gyms, theaters, religious services, and more. While Tokyo Disney Resort still largely remains closed due to the impact of the coronavirus, Xperi, the shopping center at Tokyo Disney Resort, similar to a Disney Springs or Downtown Disney, is reopening June 1st. The Oriental Land Company stated that the following procedures will be in place. Not all businesses will be open. Businesses that are open will be restricted to 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Temperatures will be checked upon entry. Anyone with a temperature above 37.5 degrees Celsius will not be admitted. Entry may be restricted during high traffic hours. Disney Magical Kingdom blog has revealed an entire collection themed to Hong Kong's brand new Castle of Magical Dreams uh, that's currently being sold at the Kingdom Gift Shop inside Hong Kong Disneyland Hotel, which remains open with limited operations despite the park being closed. The collection is made up of a very wide range of products for kids and adults alike, with both flashy items with tons of sequins and gold glitter, as well as more understated products like a white baseball cap with a signature D and a tiny version of the new castle. One of the standouts is a flip sequin pillow that appears to have Sleeping Beauty Castle on it, but if you swipe your hand down to, to uh, lay the uh, sequins flat, the brand new Castle of Magical Dreams is revealed. I love that they're not hiding the fact that it was another castle. I think this is what I really need to get this. I need this desperately. The clear light up keychain is also a stunning item and could be used as a Christmas tree decoration during the holidays. The autograph book with 3D pop up for the new castle is a creative design as well. You can check out the full line at WDWNT.com. I want, I remember we, we announced this castle actually at WDWNT.com. We announced this project. And so I'm, I'm a little partial to it. I'm, I'm a little emotional um, about it. And I, I would love to get this stuff. I gotta, I gotta figure out how. Adventures by Disney has announced that in an abundance of caution, most trips and river cruises through the end of July have been canceled due to COVID-19 concerns. In addition, they've recently modified their date change and cancellation policy to allow guests to receive 100% credit on reservations through August 31st. Any new bookings made on future trips through the end of June 2020 will be subject to fully refundable deposits until the final payment date. For more information on these stories and more, head on over to WDWNT.com. I am sure since the time this show was recorded that more has come out about the grand opening, and I know we have a lot more to share from the reopening of Disney Springs, uh, at least the Disney establishments this morning as well. So uh, if you want to get the news as quickly as possible and not wait for, uh, you know, Friday's show, check out the site. If you're enjoying the show, be sure to like this video, subscribe to WDW News Today on YouTube for more great content, click the bell for notifications, and make sure to hit select all notifications so that you never miss an episode of News Today with WDW News Today. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Tom Corliss saying enjoy the rest of your today and have a great big beautiful tomorrow. And congratulations to the class of 2020. I know it's been rough, but Ditch is very happy for you.
On every episode of the Ride Rehab podcast, we put ourselves into the shoes of Imagineers. Here's a preview of our most adventurous episode in Adventureland. And, and then there was also the zipper. Uh, oh, oh. Everyone knows about the zipper. <laughs> everyone knows about the zipper. The zipper is like this. It was built in the 50s. And it's, made out, it's made out of like clockwork gears. <laughs> Um, Even my planet coaster guests won't go in the zipper. Yeah. <laughs> well, wait, that's it. What I'm... Oh, we put we put a zipper in there? Absolutely. A zipper ride. <laughs> that's the real adventure is a broken neck. <laughs> Part two of this episode will come out on the 21st, so we'll see you then.